Simon and inviting you for our quarter pound Sonic cheeseburgers for $2 every Tuesday. And also come see us every night, Monday through Thursday from 5 to close for our boneless wings. Buy one, get one free. Flavors ranging from garlic parmesan to the mild all the way up to the extreme heat with hot honey and pineapple habanero. And don't forget our dollar forty nine large iced coffee is every morning and on your morning drink stop. So take your Green Mountain coffee however you like it. Thank you and have a blessed day. Does your car or truck need a paint job, body repair, or even a tow? Call the experts at Lassie's Body Shop, family owned and operated since 1978, where the courteous, knowledgeable, and professional staff will meet all your needs at Lassie's Body Shop, where everybody is somebody. Call us today. Let us take the stress away. We are located at 1526 Rainier Road, just past the dollar store. Give us a call at 385-6193. That's 385-6193. Lassie's Body Shop. Are you thinking of selling your home or business? Hi, I'm Gloria, and as a realtor, I know that getting rid of the clutter in your home is one of the best ways to help sell your house quickly. At Jessup Premium Storage, our family-owned company provides a convenient and secure building for all of your storage needs. We now offer outdoor covered parking for that antique car, boat, or RV. Due to our recent expansion, we offer units that range in size from as small as a bedroom closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call, 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, easy kit. At the all-new Mike Burst 40 Black Shear, we have the vehicle you want at the price you need. It's just that simple. We want you to be our customer for life. We're giving a lifetime warranty on all new and pre-owned vehicles, 2009 and newer, with 80,000 miles or less. So stop the search and come see Mike Burst Ford, home of the lifetime warranty. We're saying thank you. Thank you very much for your business at Mike Burst Ford Black Shear, home of the lifetime warranty. At the all-new Mike Birch Ford, we work hard to exceed our customers' expectations every day in every department. We want to be your automobile dealer for life, so we're proud to offer it. No cost to you, a lifetime warranty on all eligible new and pre-owned vehicles. At Mike Birch Ford, the new home of the lifetime warranty, we want you to become part of our family. Not just for today or tomorrow, but for a lifetime. So come see us in our new facility in Blackshear and ask about our lifetime warranty. You'll be glad you did. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO-FM, Jessa, WIFO-FM, Jessa, 105.5 on your FM dial. Wednesday morning, 24th day of August, Butch Hubbard here with you on the Big Dog. Man, that's a nice rain we got yesterday. Today's going to be mostly sunny, high today of around 90 degrees, heat index of 100 because of all the humidity. The autumn hump doubles at uh, 2.6 feet and pretty much hang it out in that area. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Mike Birch Ford and Blackshear by Jessa Premium Storage out here on the way Cross Highway by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street, by Sonic Restaurant on uh, South First Street, and by Light Teeth Body Shop on Rainier Road. Bob, we've got some special guests in this morning. Got some people from the school system with a special program. They want to get the information out to the general public, so Nelda Simmons in, and we'll just turn over to her, and she can introduce to her the guest, and what are, give us your title. Well, what are we okay. discussing? Uh, we're we're kind of in the dark here, All but right. help us out. Uh, my name is Nelda Simmons, and um, I'm the parent involvement coordinator for the county through the Title I program, which is a federal program, which which we get um, money from, and it goes on the poverty level, but they really emphasize parent involvement, and about four years ago, I was at a training, and they introduced this model that's called APTT that had been used in another state and it, the APTT stands for Academic Parent Teacher Teams and it was um, founded by a Dr. Maria Paredes um, and there was a low functioning school that was in a high poverty level. It was like a school that you go to in the... In the Inner cities? Yeah, like in our big state, and it, had, it was fenced in. It was full of gangs, full drug infested, drug dealers, drive by shootings, and you know how the state requires you to do standardized tests to see where you stand and how you compare to the state and how you compare to the nation. This school had tried so many different things, and their school scores remained um, very, very low, like down in the teens, and so. They came about this method and they said, well, they would try it. 
and how this method diff differs from what we've done in the past. We've always used the word parent involvement, but a parent can be involved in something that's going on in school, but they cannot, uh, but they're not always engaged in their child's education so the george's way of thinking is that we want to have family engagement which includes the parent guardian then the student the community and the school all working together to um, increase student achievement and help all students to be successful well they did they piloted this program and in one year, their scores went from in the teens to up into the 40 percentile, which I know 40 percent still sounds low, but that was a big jump for them. It was over 20 points that That's they fantastic. did in one year. So from that, the, the model really got a lot of attention and took off. So four years ago, the state of Georgia decided to partner with um, a company called West Ed and that company comes in and they are helping us to get the state of georgia going in this direction we are the we're one of 30 schools in the state of georgia that is doing this program it's just elementary and um the one of 30 schools that's doing it and it's a pilot program and we get some benefits from being in the pilot program such as they pay for part of what the program cost and then we also get a lot of extra technical assistance by being in the in the pilot program and by this i mean we get extra tra training we they are continuously in touch with us and we will go to atlanta this friday to get more training but we went last may and had training and they will be sending people into our schools and helping us to develop this program and make it work the best way possible and they they have been doing this for several years now this is the four, third year in the state of georgia so they're like the experts and so we are very excited to be one of the 30 schools in georgia doing this but we're even more excited to be able to do this to include the whole family into what we are doing with our students to help student success. A lot of people have the myth that parents don't care about what their child does in school. Um, but I have a philosophy that there's a lot of parents that don't know how to help their children and therefore that child gets no help. And a study that was done shows that if a child goes to school for six hours a day, 180 days of the year, that how the amount of time that the child spends at school with the teacher is only 12% of their time. 33% of that time is sleeping and then 55% of that time is spent with their parents. So, I know everybody's heard the saying that your parent is the most important teacher that you will ever have in your life. And so this is really backing up that philosophy. But what we're trying to do is equip the parents with the knowledge and the materials in order for them to further their learning that we're doing at home. I mean, at school into the homes. Now, what is your involvement with uh, Jessabella uh, Minery, uh, Nelda? I do the parent um, parent involvement for all of the county. So I help with like how you've heard of literacy nights, curriculum nights. Mm -hmm. You've heard of all these programs. This program is going to take the place of all of that in, at Jessup Elementary. And so this year at Jessup Elementary, we will have three meetings and there'll be 75 minutes a piece. And what makes this program unique is that usually when you have a literacy in a math night, you don't have a high attendance. This program really, really pushes us going out of the box, such as being here today and trying to get attendance and get all of these parents in here, of the hard to reach parents, all of the parents that we can involved in this program. Once they get involved, then we see that 
the parent will want to stay involved. And Reagan Givens, the um, assistant principal at just elementary, she'll go more into how it's incorporated into the school and how we expect the parents to be more involved, how we're equipping, equipping them with the materials that they do and what the teachers have done to help prepare to get ready for this program to come in. Is this for all uh, um, grades in Jessup Elementary? It'll be K through five. Um, K through five at Jessup Elementary. And, you, and the reason why it's Jessup Elementary, you said they keep adding 10 schools each year. Start off with 10 last year, 20, and now 30. And Jessup Elementary happens to be fortunate to be part of the top 30 or the first 30 in the state of Georgia to be involved in this program. Right, Nelda? That's right. Um, when I approached the county about doing um, this in our school. When I first went to training, which was four years ago, right, I came back and I was very excited because this program has so many benefits. Um, it just changes your whole concept on how to deal with things. And Reagan and I have worked together and doing literacy events, doing math events. She has come the closest to anybody in the county to doing the program, to doing literacy and math nights um, and guiding that school in the direction that the state has wanted to go. So I talked with the director and I've talked with Reagan and I talked with some other schools to see if anybody was interested. And Reagan immediately started looking at YouTube. You can put APTTT. APTT and that stands for academic parent teacher teams. Okay. You can put that into the your search engine and you can see um YouTube after YouTube articles, so many articles and everything on the success of this program. Reagan immediately said, please let us do it. Um and we've worked together and we work together well. And so that was the school that I recommended because she jumped on board and was ready to do it. Is this for all parents at the school? Do you, 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 you try to, to, to do certain segments or is it all for the, all parents getting involved in this program? It's all parents, but what we do, what makes it different is it's spread out over three nights. So you'll do um, certain grades like K two, K and one, mm -hmm. one night, two and three one night and okay. five one night and she'll explain how they decide how to do that okay um, good morning reagan good morning all right so you're the assistant principal at jessup elementary is that I right am, that's okay right. so you saw this program that uh, nelda simmons was uh, looking at and been involved with for a while and what made you excited about uh, bringing it into jessup elementary it was a different approach to parent engagement we've had activities where our teachers have worked so hard to provide activities and have things for the parents. And we'd get a, an okay turnout parent attendance, but really there was no measurable outcome in terms of student achievement from those activities. So when she came back and was talking to me about this, I was real excited because there is research to show that this program increases parent attendance tremendously and it, in, it increases student achievement so how that's why that? we wanted how does it get more parents involved and how does it increase uh, uh, a student's performance well i can get into that now Go there, right there are some different things that we're going to do this time we're going to remove the barriers that prevented parents from attending in the past and the first thing we're going to be doing which is different is providing child care <clears throat> um, when we have activities in the evening, it's difficult for parents to find places for their child to go. And the activities in the classroom that we're doing with the parents are really just for the parents. It's not for the students. So we're going to provide child care for our JES students that come that night. Um, we'll have non-homeroom teachers in the gym, and we've got students from the high school that are coming to help assist. So we'll have activities in the gym for the students. So child care is taken care of. That shouldn't be an issue that keeps okay. anybody from attending. The second thing we're going to do is provide dinner. It's always been, you know, how am I going to get them fed before, after the meeting? We're going to feed them. 
Um, feed them, they will come. That's exactly feed right. Them after the meeting, right? Yes, they yes. will have. They have to attend the meeting in its entirety, <laughs> and they'll get a meal ticket at the end of the meeting. Okay. The kids will get a ticket, and then we'll all meet up in the lunch room and have dinner together. Right. But to sweeten the pot even more, we're going to have door prizes. Um, we've already had several businesses that have given us stuff to use. Um, Ace Hardware's donated some things. Mary's Bouquet. Um, if there's any other businesses out there that want to donate and help us sweeten this deal, feel free to um, contact us and let us know and we'll come get them. So um, we've got childcare, we've got dinner, we've got prizes. So hopefully that's going to help get parents in. But we're also doing a lot more direct contact. In the past, we just send flyers home, have stuff in the newspaper, the radio, but we're really going to be making some parent contacts. Good. And and when I say parents, let me back up just a minute. Um, it doesn't have to be a parent that attends this meeting for our children. It can be a grandparent, aunt, uncle, babysitter, um, an older sibling that's high school age or college age, any adult that's willing to stand in the gap for these children and say, I'm willing to come, learn what I need to know, and work with them at home. So okay. when I say parent, it's it's any adult that's you know willing right. to take on that role. <clears throat> so that's how we're planning on getting them here. Um, also, at the end of the year, we're going to have a huge prize to give away. I'm not going to say what that is just yet. It's going to be a surprise. But um, families that have had representatives at all three meetings will have their name in a pot and have an opportunity to win the big prize. And we're going to have two bicycles that we'll give away for the kids. So again, any family that's attended all three of the meetings throughout the year, their children's names will go in for the drawing for one of the two bicycles. So, I mean, the big prize is student achievement. More, you know, they're right. going to help their kids, but we're also going to. What are you teaching the these, uh, uh, or, or telling, or teaching, or informing these parents that's going to help them increase their child's performance in school? Okay, when they get to the meetings, they're going to go to their child's homeroom teacher's class. Each grade level has chosen a. Um, a specific foundational target skill for this first meeting that they feel like is an important foundational skill for that grade level. And that's what they're going to focus on. Um, they will have assessed all the students in the classroom and they'll know exactly where they are in terms of that target skill. They'll know where they need to be mid-year and where they need to be at the end of the year. And I'll give you an example. Kindergarten decided as a grade level that letter recognition and letter sounds are an important target skill for kindergarten. They're learning to read, so they need to recognize letters and know that letters represent sounds. So, um, for example, Bob currently knows 23 letters. He can recognize 23 letters. Um, by mid-year, he'd need to know 40. By the end of the year, he'd be, need to be able to recognize 52, okay. Okay, lowercase. Um, so, each grade level will have a specific target skill that they're going to focus on They'll know exactly where each child in that classroom is at this point in time. They'll um, create graphs that they share with the parents so the parent will know exactly where their child is and where they need to go throughout the school year. Um, <clears throat> they'll share all of that information with them. And the next step then is to share activities that the parents can do at home. Um, the teachers will create two activities that will focus on increasing those skills for those mm -hmm. students and they'll teach the parents how to do that. They'll model that activity. The parents will have an opportunity to practice that activity. They'll model it. So they're learning during that 75 minute meeting exactly what they need to do. Um, a lot, a lot like Nelda alluded to, a lot of times parents don't know what to do. They're going to know exactly what they need to do and they're fun, engaging, interactive activities that they can do at home with no problem. They should be able to leave knowing exactly what to do, but obviously if they have any questions, they can contact their child's teacher or, or me or Dr. Priester. Um, all of the activities we'll, you know, that we that we use, if there's any materials they need to do that at home, we're going to provide that. So when they leave at the end of the evening, they'll know exactly what the foundational skill is. They'll know exactly what the activities are, and they'll have any of the materials that they need to do that at home to track it. What kind of follow-up will you have on this to make sure that uh, the, the, the parents and the kids are still, the students are still interacting in this program? Well, we're going to meet 
three times throughout the year. And before they leave from that first meeting, the last step in that process is creating a SMART goal for each child. So the teacher will talk individually with each parent in that classroom to set a SMART goal for their child. <clears throat> okay. and, um, and it might be, you know, Bob knows 23 letters right now. Um, by the time we meet again, he will know 40. And as the parent, I'm willing to work with Bob 15 minutes a day, five times a week. Okay. Um, so, so they're kind of doing a, a contract of sorts. Is they do with this? Or I was just wondering how the teacher keeps up with it. Um, no, not specifically. Now, there may be activities that the, the grade levels mm -hmm. do online, but it would be grade level specific, and they would share that with the parents. But the way we're going to track this is, when we get closer to the second meeting, the teachers will reassess to determine where the students are and where we need to go. And this is not just to remediate. If we have students that are you know, gifted or already above that baseline target, we'll be able to give those parents enrichment activities for them to do. All right, Reagan um, Gibbons in here, assistant principal for um, Jessup Elementary, along with Nelda Simmons, talking about a new program that's being implemented at Jessup Elementary. And when will your uh, first meeting be? Our first meeting start next week, Monday night, 6 o'clock, kindergarten and first grade. Tuesday night, 6 o'clock is fourth and fifth grade. And then Thursday night is second and third grade. All right. And so all the, uh, the, the parents and guardians are being um, informed about this and encouraged to come. Absolutely. We've sent home flyers several times now. We sent home stuff the first day of school um, at open house we had some things and the flyers that we've sent home kind of don't leave an option for them to say no we're not coming it's yes i will be there or no i can't attend but this person will be there in right. my place so right. we really want them to know if they can't come if a parent can't come please send, send somebody, somebody. Mm -hmm. okay so. and uh and and, and Elda, the past a couple of years has been going on in the state of Georgia with the first of the 10 schools and 20 schools. Has it all been elementary schools? No, it goes through the high school level and it even got they, some of them, some districts have chosen to target one grade level all the way across the school. Okay. So like how we have five elementary schools, say we wanted to start in pre-K. So, and then you would concentrate on doing pre-K throughout the district. So it's done different ways in different districts. Uh, what the, the, I would say the best thing about this program is how individualized it is. And I, get, I think that both of y'all would know that if a child is in a play or if a child has had some little role, that parent attendance, you can't get, you can't get, have enough room you sometimes have enough room, right? for yeah. the parents to come in. Mm -hmm. um, so this program is very individualized. That is what makes it unique. When that parent came to literacy nights and math nights before, they were just learning some games and stuff that they could do at home. But it really was not telling them anything about how their child was doing and what their child needs to do to be on level or what their child needs to do to be more successful than what they are. So um, when they come in at the schools, uh, right they will have folders and it's got numbers on the folders and so each parent will receive a folder okay and that in that folder has your child's information and it's confidential nobody else can see it except for you so your heart might sink if you maybe get a folder and your child is very low but what makes this even more unique is that the teacher then is very encouraging and very positive that you, we can meet this goal together. We've got to work together and we're here to partner with you. That's what we want to do is be partners in your child's okay. education. So that's where she's talking about the data driven and that comes into play in their folders. So that parent, when they come in, they're not going to just get a little activity to carry home. 
they're going to get information that targets exactly what their child needs to be successful. Okay, so here in uh, in, in Jessup and Wayne County, we decided to go with one school uh, from pre-K up through fifth grade instead of one grade all the way across. Uh, I guess because of your involvement with it and and, 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 and uh, Ms. Gibbons' uh, encouragement with you getting this involved at Jessup Elementary and then being improved by the state, right? Yes, sir. And then what will happen is when you become a pilot, one of the end to the pilot program, next year we have signed and it's a requirement that just elementary then will take at the end of this year and we will start training another school. So another we, school here in Wayne County? Another or? school yeah. in Wayne County. So another school here in Wayne County? So each year this program. we will add a school to but this But Jessica Elementary will continue to be part of it next year. Yes, sir. What kind of training team. have you done with the teachers uh, with this? Um, Reagan. Reagan has done most of that. Reagan? We spent one entire day of post planning going through every element of this process. Um, from explaining it to walking them through the steps, modeling every single portion of the program, the picking the foundational skill, the creating the um, activities that they'll be doing, modeling those activities, creating the targets, creating the SMART goals. So we spent an entire day walking through every single one of those steps. Are the teachers on board with this? They, they are. Okay. They're very excited. Very We've got excited. great teachers and they've done a lot of this kind of thing in the past. Mm -hmm. But we just haven't had the, the parent attendance and I and I think that's, you know, been on us. We haven't done a good a job as we needed to to get parents there by providing child care and dinner and that kind of thing. So yeah, um the the parents are really excited. And again, because the research shows that it's made such a huge difference in student achievement and ultimately that's our goal. We want our children to be successful. So I think it's a great excited. idea getting the parents more involved and also teaching the parents on how to help. Mm -hmm. I know as y'all mentioned, parents say, Yeah, I want to help with what I do. Exactly. And once again, what is the name of this program? APTT, which stands for Academic Parent Teacher Teams. Okay. Um and it's been around for several years. And, but it has been in the state of Georgia, has pursued it for the last three years. Well, I wish y'all the best luck with this this year, as this pilot program is here now here in Jessup Wayne County at Jessup Elementary. Keep us updated, please. Come on ever okay. so often and let us know how it's going and so forth, uh, because it sounds like an exciting way for the students here in Wayne County to be able to increase their academic level. As you said, next year there'll be another school, and hopefully next year after that will be another school, and eventually all, all the schools will be involved, right. and it'll be a great program here for the students here in Wayne County. Bob, questions or comments for Nelda or for Reagan? Uh, just a comment, you know, when it was presented by the board to the board the board was excited about it you know excited to the program you know because like i said the state has shown the results so they're just excited that this program is being here in wayne county and like i said hopefully next year another school and more schools get involved but i said it's all about teacher i mean it's, it's all about parent involvement Absolutely. and that's the key but like i said you're taking steps to you know entice parents to get there like i said the child care the meal things like that will definitely help so but it's very exciting for us to be part of this pilot and change the way of thinking um, because as Reagan stated earlier, parents get, uh, teachers get discouraged when they put a lot of time into planning all of these literacy nights and, parent, and math nights and not right. nobody shows or we have a very poor showing. But um, with this, I think what's interesting and the parent would really, really love and benefit from when that parent comes to this class on that night that they're, that is their grade level not to come, that teacher will teach them just like they are teaching that type child. So they will see just how rigorous our, our curriculum is. They will see, oh my gosh, all of this is expected of my child. And you know, it's going to be very eye opening for parents to see exactly how aggressive we have gotten with. But we don't want family. parents to feel intimidated. We're going to give them the tools and the skills that they need to be able to go home and work with their students. So certainly don't want them to be intimidated by any of this. They'll leave. Right. and ready to roll. Feel comfortable to help with Absolutely. your child out. Absolutely. And if you've got a student at Jessup Elementary, expect you or someone from your uh, family in some sort of way to be there next week at these meetings. I'm glad that y'all say it's not really optional to the parent or the guardian or or a uh, 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 high school student sibling or aunt or uncle. Somebody needs to be there to help this child out.
All right. Well, thanks for coming this morning. This is we're all excited about this program, and, and like I said, please keep us updated. We're, we're, we're we'll looking forward to seeing how this goes for Just Elementary this year. Okay. All right. Thank thanks you for coming. In. All right. The world famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Lacey's Body Shop on Rainier Road, by Sonic Restaurant out on South First Street, by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street. And just a premium storage out here on the way across highway by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess, a big dog country radio. The time is 830. Let's check in the latest news from Fox News Radio. This is the Fox News Alerts. I'm Lisa Brady. A race to find survivors in central Italy where a 6.2 magnitude earthquake leveled buildings in several small towns while people were sleeping overnight. The mayor of one of the three towns devastated by the earthquake said this town no longer exists. The massive earthquake in central Italy has caused dozens of casualties. Emergency workers continue to search collapsed buildings. One happy image circulating social media is of a young survivor extracted from the rubble draped in the Italian flag. This is Courtney Walsh in.